I have a horror about the blank page. I simply cannot write on a blank page or screen because once I do, I start to fix it and I never get past that first sentence. Charles Krauthammer was not the first or the last creative person to deal with the horror of the blank page. On today's episode of the Nature Journal Show, I am going to give you some tips, tricks, and techniques to help you start a brand new journal and get past that horrible first blank page. Stay tuned. Tip number one, buy a new sketchbook as fast as you can before you even fill up your last one. Sometimes I'll carry two nature journals in my kit so that I am ready to go. You need to open this thing as soon as possible. And one good tip is to cut off on sketchbooks like this, cut off a piece of this and glue it on the inside front cover of your journal so you remember what type of paper you have if anybody asks you. Next really important thing is to just start sketching as soon as possible. This blank paper could be scary and I could spend some time doing metadata but I'm actually just going to start drawing and there's a beautiful batalur. Um, bird of prey behind me and so I'm just gonna start sketching that to get some sacrificial pancakes on my page right away one other thing you could do is you could skip in a couple pages leave like two empty pages at the front of your journal some people like to do that So I just started this brand new sketchbook and I'm trying to develop momentum today so I'm going for sort of more quick sketches and not worried about getting anything really fine tuned in and by doing that I already have four pages. I get more momentum and it's easier to keep going. When you start a new sketchbook it's easy to get distracted by the fact that it's a brand new empty page and that empty page is really scary so make sure at first you don't get too perfectionist about your drawings and you just try to fill as many pages as possible and you'll get that momentum going and then it'll be easier to pick up that sketchbook later. So even though I put very small amount of pressure on myself in that moment and did really loose sketches, I still was able to go back and add some color. So even though those Batalore sketches looked um, really shaky, I was able to make a page that looks pretty good. And more importantly, you can see also with the Serval page, I was able to go back and add color to that. So those original sketches that you just saw a couple seconds ago were very, uh, very sketchy and very loose but I was able to go back. So most importantly, I gave myself permission to try and a really low pressure threshold. If I had started um, with a drawing like this on my first page or an attempted drawing like this, that would have created a lot of pressure in this brand new sketchbook that would have made it much more difficult for me to continue um, filling pages, especially in a situation like where I'm at the San Diego Zoo. So really initially try to think about um, creating a low pressure situation in your sketchbook so that you can fill lots of pages because that's what matters most. Tip number five, instead of um, trying really hard to um, get a lot of sketches done, just eat some chocolate. Actually don't do that, that's a bad idea. Tip number six, if you're really afraid of the blank page at the beginning and you don't want the pressure on you to create the first drawing, one thing you can do is cut out quotes or cut out photos or other drawings that you've done and attach them in there. So I'm actually gonna cut out this quote that I started the video with and you can make them with nice calligraphy but don't think about it too much. The whole point is to start dealing with that blank page. Um, where are my good scissors? These are not right. And then you can even just use some of this uh, really easily removable artist tape and just glue that in the front and that creates something to get you started. It could be a motivational quote. That would be really great. Um, on some of my journals, I've written pencil miles on the front. Uh, you could use tape such as this. So you could use artist tape and just write pencil miles. You can also do some doodling on the cover of your book. Just don't get too precious about it. Anything to start uh, making some marks on there. You could even 
do things like I've done in the past, um, you know, color swatches. You could do your, in, it's really good to have something like this in the front of your sketchbook um, with um, what people can do if they find your nature journal um, with your email address. And that's something you could do. I was messing around with acrylic ink a lot during this time. So I would do things like this in the front, front few pages. This does have the potential, these kind of things do have the potential to make you a little bit more precious about your book if they come out nice. Um, you could even take like color swatches on scrap paper like this and use that same tape and just tape those into the front of your book. But you can see how simple this is. I literally just taped this uh, color strip um, into my the front of my nature journal and I taped in this little quote that I wrote out in pencil. So these are the kind of little tricks you can do to trick your brain. Um, here's another example. Uh, you could get more fancy with this, but just don't get precious about it, see? So here are some, an EKG that I got. So I thought this looked really cool. So I just cut out the chart and glued it into the front of my nature journal and these little color swatches, which I think were cool. So these are all kinds of things things that you can do to trick your brain so that there's not a blank page. You can also get more into it doodling. So your nature journal, if your nature journal is a place where you're very serious, maybe get have a little fun doing some like geometric um, doodling on, uh, on the front page there, you know. So those are all ideas. Another thing, um, tip number eight that you can use is um, you can start creating an index. So what you can do is you can number all of your pages, go through, these ones go up to almost 95, I think. So number in the bottom corner of your page and then start creating an index in the back. Um, that is another way to get over that blank page situation. Okay, tip number 10 for starting a new nature journal. When you buy your journal, take out a $20 bill. Your journal probably costs around this much anyways. And tell a friend of yours that if you don't finish the first five pages in a week, that you will pay your friend $20. This is sort of a fun joke, but it also creates an obligation and commitment with another human being. We're social animals, so sometimes the promises that we make ourselves we don't take seriously, but little promises, even one dollar, little promises with uh, financial, uh, financial things at stake with another human being will end up putting a much bigger obligation. So try those tips out. I hope that helps. I know that starting a new sketchbook can be really challenging. Um, we're starting a new year, starting a new nature journal. So hope those help you a lot. And if you can't wait all the way until next week for the next episode of the show, check out these two episodes here and be sure to subscribe. By subscribing, you will find out when the new episode comes out. And if you want to get even more information and help support me in the work that I'm doing, check out my Patreon page. 